Okay, uh, I'm gonna show you guys today in this video uh, my uh, workaround to the problematic Ford door switch uh, issue. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably know by now that uh, Ford and their infinite wisdom has decided to fully embed their door switches into their door latch assembly. Um, not very smart because if you ever have an issue with your door switch, instead of having to pay maybe $5 to replace that door switch, you have to pay $250 or more and labor if you pay someone else to do it for you to replace your entire door latch assembly. So thanks a lot Ford. So what I'm going to do is this is basically a follow up to some other YouTube videos where uh, they take their wire that goes straight to their BCM and rampus it straight to ground. Uh, that's fine and all. It obviously works. Um, the only issue I have with that is if you open the door um, your, do your dome light doesn't turn on, not to mention that your car always thinks that your door is shut even if it's not. So what I'm going to do is instead of taking that wire that goes to the BCM straight to ground, I'm going to install a normally open switch so that when the door is open, uh, the switch is open and it doesn't see ground. Um, I don't happen to have a pop-up door switch, a traditional pop-up button uh, door switch laying around here, but I do have a magnet switch. Uh, specifically a Magnalink MLG-L02. Uh, I don't know if you can see that at all too much or not, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a 3 8 inch hole uh, into the B pillar of my car and I'm going to put a magnet on the door and as long as the magnet is somewhere near the end of this switch, it closes the switch and it's going to act just like any other traditional uh, door switch. So uh, with that, let's get started. Okay, so what you can see here is I pulled apart the black trim on the B-pillar. Uh, I should say that the door where um, the door switch is affecting me is the right rear of my 2013 Ford Flex. So uh, if you look at your electrical diagram for the right rear door, uh, the wire you're looking for is the yellow wire. So I pulled apart this black trim on the B-pillar and it pulls just straight out as you can see. And what I did here is I drilled my 3 8 inch hole and I stuck some electrical fish tape uh, so that I can get the other end out over here. And over here there was a kind of uh, foam insulation that just pops right out. So I got the end of the lead there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the end of this switch uh, to the end of that fish tape, uh, pull it through, and then you can see I got two leads over here at the end of this switch. Sorry, the focus isn't the greatest here. Uh, one is going to go straight to the yellow BCM wire, and the other will go uh, to ground. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so now you can see I was able to successfully use the electrical fishing tape to pull the uh, magnet switch through the hole. Um, I couldn't record the video because I needed both hands to make sure the switch didn't fall back into the B pillar here. But uh, you can see it's installed right there. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the magnets uh, right over here. Um, that should be close enough for the switch to work every time the door is closed. The normally open switch will close. Um, and I suppose before I do that, I still have to splice the yellow cable here and uh, do what I need to do with these two leads here on the uh, magnet switch. One's going to go to the yellow wire and the other's going to go to ground. Okay, uh, moment of truth. I have it all buttoned up. Um, like I said, I had two leads coming off of the magnet switch. You'll see them here with the two gray wire nuts. Uh, I had to use a flashlight here thanks to the Wisconsin winter here. It gets dark pretty fast. So uh, two leads to the magnet switch. Uh, one goes straight to the yellow wire from the BCM. That's the yellow wire coming from the ground up. Uh, that's what goes to the BCM. The yellow wire coming from the top down, that's going to the uh, junky door switch that we're bypassing here. So um, that's one of the leads of, off the magnet switch. And the other one, I have a wire nut with this green wire here, which I'm using as a ground. Um, if you can see up here, I used a solderless terminal, one of those crimp terminals, and I attached it to the body of the car for ground. Um, and you can see here, I use one magnet here. I place it right there. It lines up pretty well with the door switch. Um, about a six pack of these uh, magnets uh, from Home Depot for $1.98, so pretty cheap. And uh, let's give it a shot here, we'll give it a test. Um, you can see right now the door is ajar, 
and I'm going to close it and let's see what happens. Oh, that's a good sign because it looks like the light on the side mirror is off. Let's take a look inside the car and it looks like the door is closed. Haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> so I'll open it one more time just to test it. The door is open and it looks like the dome light is on, I think. Yep, it's on and I'm going to close it and we'll see what happens. That light is off, the dome light is off, and the car detects that it's closed, so perfect. Looks like a winner to me. All right, so uh, there you have it. Uh, looks like I fixed my Ford Flex's uh, faulty uh, door switch, uh, all for about eight to ten dollars in parts. Honestly, uh, that magnet switch costs maybe five to seven dollars, uh, just about any electronics catalog and uh, the magnets costed about two bucks um, and I had plenty of solderless terminals and wire just laying around here so um, that's it seems to be working it's weatherproof uh, because it's contactless it's a magnet so don't have to worry about weatherproofing and um, thanks for nothing for it <laughs> so uh, if you guys have any questions go ahead and ask in the comments otherwise thanks for watching